Be me, eight-year-old Chad in Kyoto during the 15th century. I rule over a million daimyos that make up the islands of Japan, but I'm too young to rule. Instead, the shogunate holds true power over the feudal lords. Good, as we were in the middle of the Sengoku Jidai period. What started as a conflict between two daimyos soon encompassed all of Japan. Warring states across Japan were engaged in a Thunderdome battle royale. No one was safe, well, except for me, for now. The shogun, meanwhile, used various tools to check the power of the daimyos, such as taking everyone's folded nippon steel blades. That hurts me a lot. <laughs> you fucker. Healing from your daimyos is perfectly normal, as is ordering their leaders to perform ritualistic suicide by disembowelment. Life in the rising sun is unforgiving, and so if any daimyo aspires to become the next shogun, send his country into a regency. While Shimazu and Otomo fought for Japan's sovereign island, the shogun hatched an idea. <laughs> We really, we really did all of this just to end the game that quickly. To distract the warring states, the shogun planned an invasion of Ming China. Chinese land war was tantalizing, but the daimyos wanted to grow more powerful before peacefully marching across China. After all the fighting stopped, the true battle for Asia began. Korea and Japan versus China, and fate definitely smiled upon the Japanese when the pirate fleet of Tsushima soon found themselves against the Ming Navy. The waters now spoke Japanese. Japanese land forces soon moved into Korea to aid their ironically historical allies. The Chinese then stampeded into North Korea, but were quickly defeated despite outnumbering the alliance. But even our string of victories could not prevent what was about to come. The Chinese navy defeated our forces, lifting the blockade, and without the Chinese capital, we were slowly losing in war score and, more crucially, manpower. We need to inflict some damage on the Chinese themselves, so we marched as far as Beijing itself. Along the way, right in some more entries to the spicy Sino-Japanese relations Wikipedia page. However, the Chinese military launched a counterattack. The battle almost ends in a victory for the Japanese forces, until the reinforcements arrive. Everything went so wrong, so fast. We surrendered. Japan was in disarray. The feudal lords now picked each other apart like vultures. And goodbye. <laughs> Japan was split into two political blocks. Inevitably, war breaks out. Shogun loyalists had numbers, but the Shogun had garbage ideas and military in comparison to just about everyone else. The capital was soon lost. After escaping, the retreating forces were intercepted without a chance to wipe their own ass, surviving only by moving to the northern island of Hokkaido. Shameful display! Peace talks were soon made where the Shogun now surrendered to Oda, becoming the new Shogun. The surviving territory of the Ashikage clan was soon conquered by the Yamana clan, who were angered from being excluded in the peace talks. I cannot believe that you gave everything to A, Ruffle. <laughs> I feel betrayed. There were no survivors. And that's my video, a short one of a multiplayer campaign where we all played in Japan. If you want to revisit this idea or have a request for future videos, you can let me know in this video and the links down below. I'd like to thank all of my supporters, including those of the Bazaari, such as Burb and Martin DE, who have helped to make these videos possible. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the other content on my channel. Sayonara. <laughs> セックス気持ちいいな。僕はセックス大好き。いつもセックス毎日やりたい。セックス人工マンコに入れたいな。ああ、気持ちいいな。入れたい。鼻血が出るほどいい。マンコは気持ちいい。ぬるぬるしていい